Today I'm going to make a multi-track recording of I'd Rather Go Blind by Etta James. Now I'm going to use nothing but the Zoom IQ6, which is um, a stereo mic. I'll just switch this other camera on here so that you can see that. It's the iPad here with the stereo mic. And as you can see, when I'm talking, it's making, it's the, the level is registering different on left and right. So that signifies that I am recording in stereo. If I just tap the drum there. Basically, I've got the thing set up on the keyboard just over here to capture the drums. I've had a little play with the positioning and all that sort of thing. So this is kind of harks back to those good old days where you try and position the mics to get the best recording. But they were fun days because you never knew what you were going to get. Now, there are no other mics on this these drums at all. Uh, the only other mic I've got is this one here, which is simply capturing the speech for the narration of this film. So. I'm going to start recording and I'm going to record free time. So let's make sure I've got this other camera going there. There we go. One, two, three. Okay, so that's just a little start. Um, I've just got to try and remember the arrangement now. I think it's eight bars guitar solo at the beginning, two verses, and then a guitar solo outro. So next up, I've got my bass amp over here. So I've got to drag the iPad over to the bass amp and try and get a good sound with that. Try and get a good sound with the bass amp. Now, I'm only going to record as opposed to the drums where I recorded in stereo, I'm going to go back and actually only use one mic on the bass. I don't want stereo bass. Um, so I've just got the one channel here, which is now, I'm just gonna drag this over to the, the bass amp. This lead that comes out of the iPad is simply feeding the narration recorder so that you can hear everything that's going on um, you know, as I go. So I'm just going to, Position this in front of the bass amp, pick up my bass and see what it sounds like. So Make sure I tune up my bass. Now, I'm going to drag this other camera over so that you can see basically what's happening with the iPad while I'm recording the bass. 
So I'm not going to go two hammer and tongs with fitting it on the screen. I'll just make sure you can see it. So that you can see the bass amp over here, that speaker down there, in front of the iPad with a nice glowing, with a nice light as well that's sort of trashing with the... Uh, I'll just angle it slightly so that you can see the screen. There we go. So, so you can see the telltale level meter going there. So I'm going to wear the headphones now so that I can record these parts, this part all together. So just um, double check we've got something there. Okay, so here we go with the bass. Okay, so there's the bass part. So next up, I'm gonna record some guitar. Now, I'll just get rid of the bass. Precious little room in here as there is, as it is. <coughs> so, I've got my Roland JC120 amp down here. Now, the reason I'm using that, you think, well, come on, this is a soul tune. You should use a, be using a valve amp. Well, yeah, okay. But actually, I want there to be a sort of, um, I want there to be a bit of a bit of uh, stereo chorus here to make full use of that Zoom IQ6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to record some more. I'm going to record in front of the guitar amp this time. So let's put the balance it on a stool as we used to do back in the day. And I'm going to go back into the stereo recording mode. So um, I'm going to got my iPad here so I'm going to come out of there and go back to the main screen where I can see my two tracks that are now recorded I've got the drums and the bass so I'm now going to add a track and I'm going to go clean and I'm going to use the stereo input there we go So I've got a little bit of jigging about to do to get this to work. Um, so. 
<clears throat> talk amongst yourselves very briefly while I find, oh, there we go, violin case. That's low enough to capture the stereo sound of my speakers. So I'm just going to get the lead out of the way, get my guitar sorted. So all's going well so far, but of course I haven't heard the bass back yet. So I've got to do a little bit of tinkering about to get the to get the um, the bass to work. So if I plug my guitar in now, and then you can see the telltale meter on the floor here. Now the iPad has 16 stereo tracks. Uh, it's 32 mono or 16 in stereo and you think well blimey you know we were all you know 16 track recording was big news back in the sort of late 70s and we've got the same sort of thing happening now we've got the 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 sort of the convenience of that 16 track stereo <laughs> Now the Zoom IQ6 does have a level meter on here so that I can So <clears throat> those of you who are on your soul vibe you know don't worry about the fact I've got a, a JC120 recording you know it's just one of them things one of those things the JC120 is a massively powerful amplifier you know one of the things of the 1970s and 80s and they're still being made 40 years on so it's all good so I'm just going to double check that I've got that other camera working I'll just do a sort of acrobatic pirouette around here to make sure that that's happening yet yeah, we are we're all good so <coughs> So, need my headphones, need my guitar, need an E-flat major chord, and we're there. So, go back to the beginning. I'm just going to have a very quick playback with the bass. It's sounding pretty good to me already. pretty pleased with this so oh, I'll just take that reverb off actually I don't want reverb on there I can put that on afterwards okay
Okay, I'm all happy with that. Try to balance that dynamic. When you're going through a tune and you're trying to, to get something that sounds, you know, that's got some sort of dynamic exploration in it, that's what you want, really, to leave room for those vocals in the verse and then ramping it up a bit for the second verse where the vocals are just a bit louder and a bit more sort of, um, a bit more sort of emotional. So I'm just gonna quickly stick um, a guitar thing on here, a little guitar solo bit. Um, this is when the strap lock decides to fall to pieces. Great, yay. So I'm gonna use my trusty old Telecaster this time to do this. <coughs> so, as you can see, I'm suffering from a bit of a cold, so I've changed the key to suit the cold. Um, so. So I'm going to put another track down but this time I'm going to record it in mono because I've switched the chorus of the amplifier off so I don't need stereo so more sounds clean there we go I'm trying to read upside down <laughs> Yeah, that'll do me. So I'll go back to the beginning and I'll put a bit of guitar solo y stuff over the top. So here we go then. it would be helpful if the guitar was actually in tune. Um, one of those basic things that you sort out before a session starts. should be in um okay so i'm going to undo what i just did and then go back to start and have another go <coughs> so Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Okay, so there's a bit of lead guitar on there. <coughs> now comes the vocals. Now, this is where you have to be a little bit careful with the internal mic because ideally you should have a pop shield over it. Now, the Zoom IQ6 does come with a pop shield, helpfully, which is a pretty good thing. Uh, and that just basically means that you've got a bit of control over the wind noise, but you don't want to get too close to your... You don't want to get too close to the, the mic itself. So, just make sure that's off. Yep. Someone told me it was over. <coughs> I'll just cough a bit more before I start recording. So um, I'll just uh, move that over there. Finish with that camera for now, uh, because the basically the making of with this is pretty much the same, uh, the same idea uh, with um, with all the tracks. So what I've got to do is try and position the mic so that I'm not too close, not too far away, and I'm comfortable. Obviously, I've got to sing. So I'm just going to slip the cover on that mic so that now we've got this. We have the iPad with the cover over the mic. So what I'm going to do now is to get a new track. More sounds clean. Someone told me. Now, I want to have the mic gain up enough that it will capture the vocals, but baby, 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 Paul. <coughs> that should do it. So you've got to be a little bit careful when you hold the iPad as well. So actually I'm going to sing. I'm going to put the iPad up here on top of my other guitar amp, switch the guitar amp off. Um, when, you've, when you're recording with stuff, you don't want to leave guitars sort of lying about because it's the buzzing and all the hum and all of that sort of thing will affect how the amp is going to work, how the, how the recording is going to work, because you've, you've got this sort of buzzing in the background. You're thinking, where's that noise coming from? So, just got to make the... Just got to try and sort that out. Okay, so let's set that mic going. And I'm gonna go for one take. Hopefully it'll be done this take because I'm uh, voice is struggling a bit today, but it might sound sound alright with this gym. So I've got my telltale lyrics up here. So something told Oh, whoa. 
So there is my sort of semi-finished product. What I've got to do now is to do a little bit of mixing. So I'm going to bring the other camera back here and have a little tinker around with stuff. So I'm going to move that mic there. So I'm just um, I'm still listening through headphones now. Ideally, you've got to have your speakers. You've got to set your set yourself up. Try not to mix on headphones all the time if you can avoid it, because you do lose that sense of sort of spatial awareness of where things are. So now just as a brief uh, aside, if you're recording a single source with a stereo mic, it can be a really nice thing in order to sort of put everything in its stereo image. Now, those of you who are familiar with Off the Wall and Thriller, Bruce Swedian, 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 I never know how to pronounce his surname, but he was the engineer on that record. And he came up with something called the Accusonic recording process, which is where you'd use pairs of mics to record single parts. So it's pretty track hungry. But in those days, you could link lots of multi-track machines up with simply time code so that you could make play one machine and the others would go, oh, yes, I know where you are. I'm going to play along with you and sync up. So you had tracks and tracks and tracks of stuff, but it's a fantastic, well, we all know how good those albums are. Um, and it's partly down to um, his recording process. So I've got my five things here now. I've got, I've got my five tracks. I've got drums, bass, rhythm guitar, lead guitar, and vocals. That's it. Don't need anything else. So I'm just going to go to the, put the cursor here, um, and I'm going to just play back with some basic level metering here and see what we've got. Something told me it was over When I saw you and him talking oh. There's a slight wind noise on those vocals. I'm just going to go back and have a little listen to those on their own. I think it was then. When I saw you and him talking I'm a bit too close to the mic there. Now, if you've recorded a take and you think, oh, I don't want to do another one, you can rescue it to a certain extent by going into the visual EQ and taking the bass right down below about 100. So let's see if that's made any difference at all. When I saw you and him talking. Oh. Oh, OK, that's a slight issue. Um, if in doubt, do it again. It was over. See what it sounds like in context. When so see what it sounds like in context there. When I saw you and him talking. Oh. Something deep down in my soul said cry boy When I saw you at that bar walking around, yeah See, I would ride 
another hour. Do you know what? I think I'm going to do this again because I think I could do better. I could do better than that. Because <coughs> it weren't very good. So I'm going to uh, just set the mic up here once again and I'm going to actually sing a little bit further away from the mic because there was no real problem with the noise aspect. You know, it wasn't very hissy at all. So I can actually get away with doing doing something a little bit better than that. So, uh, what do you mean get away with doing something better? Doing something better. Something told me it was over. So I'm going to delete that track and I'm going to go back to the beginning. But now I've done a little bit of mixing also on the backing track, which might make it easier for me to sing to anyway. Something told me it was over. Okay. Here we go then. So I'm a bit further away from the mic now. Just up the gain slightly. Something told me it was over When I saw you and him talking Something deep down in my soul cried See, this is typical, isn't it? I fool about in front of the camera and get the lyrics wrong. So, once again on that. Now, because the thing doesn't start, I'm just going to, uh, it doesn't start for a while, I'm just going to come in, just going to fast forward to where it does come in. Something told me it was over When I saw you and him talking Something deep down in my soul said cry boy When I saw you and that boy walking around That's not sniffing crying, that's sniffing because I've got me cold still. Honestly, excuses, excuses, excuses. Stop making them one day. Right, now, I'm going to listen back to that and just see what happens with those vocals now. So, yes, wind noise is a problem and you can get rid of 
very, very low rumble by cutting the bass. But if it's still there and it bothers you every time you listen to it, just do it again. Sometimes take two is the one, you know. Um, so very occasionally you have take, you know, the first take of a solo is like the best one you'll capture. Uh, and other times it's not, of course. You know, we've all been in that situation of being infuriated in a recording studio where things just aren't working right at all. So I'm just going to have a little listen back uh, just to where the vocals come in. Something deep down in my soul said cry boy. Okay, so far, I reckon I'm pretty happy with that. <clears throat> I don't think there's, there's really much there that I would go, oh, I don't know about that. Now, I've used five stereo tracks. I have another 11 available. Hmm. Maybe. Uh, just maybe. I could put some string parts down. Now you could, you could however use the string parts. I tell you what, I'm gonna have a little play with this. I'm going to try and uh, and use um, the string parts that you that go on this uh, internally. So um, strings, smart strings. Now I'm just gonna change the key to E flat major. Don't worry about, this doesn't change the pitch of your song. Um, in terms of the audio, so this is not a problem. Don't know. <laughs> not sure if this will work. Now, also, we've got to be aware that the autoplay function will not work on this now because I've recorded free tempo. Don't know. So maybe what I could do is leave the first verse completely untouched and when it goes to the second verse I could maybe ramp those strings up said I would ramp. so where basically where it comes where it goes there so you and that bar walking around said I would ride up I would ride a gold blind girl there to see you walk so you see I love you so much that I don't want you to watch me Most of all I just don't, I just don't want to Okay, now, <laughs> not sure about that, but you know, that's okay, that's all right. Uh, what I'll do actually is I'll just take the volume down of those and maybe just stick a little bit more, oh, it's got reverb on already. Uh, of course it has, because you could hear it. Um, but I'll just listen to them in context and see how we see how it's looking. Said I would ride up, I would ride up go blind. I'll tell you what, I'm going to do those again because I wasn't quite sure about the where they came in and those pizzicatos. They were okay, but actually I'd rather... Uh, I'd rather do them, rather do them again, girl, yeah. Uh, because I think I can do a little bit better. So, just um, get my camera here. And... I'm going to do those again. So, so here we go. Deep 
down. So I'll uh, just find my beginning place. There we go. In a round. Said I would round up, I would round up on blind girl. Then to see you walk away from the child. Okay, that was a bit better for me. And actually what I also did there was to cut out the basses and cellos for the end. So I had a slightly thinner string section for the outro. So um, that's another stereo track because the plugins on GarageBand do take a stereo track. Um, phew, dunno, I don't think, the thing is you can go over the top with this. Now, as a brief aside, uh, the Beatles, had four tracks to record Sergeant Pepper. That was what they had, and for good reason. George Martin was a little bit sort of skeptical about having more capability in terms of the uh, things like the, um, you know, the new 16 or the new H track that came out. Uh, Abbey Road was recorded on eight track, but you know, there are, there's lots of things to be said for just going a little bit easy with your recordings so that you don't end up with this massive great sort of um, you know armory of stuff and all these tracks that you're having to try and mix because it doesn't really make a huge amount of sense so actually I'm going to leave it at that because I think the point of the exercise has been made so there we go there is a multi-track recording using the stereo mic the zoom IQ6 a hell of a powerful bit of kit, especially with these drums. I think it sounds really quite nice. So there we go. <laughs>